guys welcome to day six of vlogmas thank you so much for being here i was just upstairs going through my little diy craft drawer and i came across all of these kitchen towels that i got at ikea these are so cute super affordable they are quite wrinkly right now because i did put them through the wash and the dryer and they got a little bit wrinkly and they've been shoved in the back of my craft drawer for quite some time but how cute would it be to make some pillows out of these so i have a couple pillows that i don't use anymore it doesn't really go with my aesthetic i'm going to be cutting like the cover off and be using the inside i don't know if it's just like a fiber fill like a fluff or if it's actually like a pillow we will find out, but I think the measurements of those pillows, I'll show you here in just a minute, will fit the measurements of these little kitchen towels. The tag says that they are 20 by 28 inches, but I think since I washed and dried them, they shrunk a little bit. So keep that in mind if you are going to be getting your own kitchen towels and making your own pillows out of these because if you're using the Ikea kitchen towels, they will shrink quite a bit. I have two of these red ones that match. I also have the same one in black that I have two of them. Those match. Um, look at how cute though. I mean, these are just adorable. The options are endless. So I am going to be using a sewing machine to sew these. I have an old Singer, but I'm not sure if it's working quite right. So I have like a newer-ish sewing machine that I will be using. But if you don't have a sewing machine, you could probably glue these together with a fabric glue or you could use stitch witchery. Just this doesn't really kind of go with my aesthetic anymore. And I think that they will fit that kind of pillow perfectly so front and back black front and back red so i'm first going to go in and cut off these little like hangers and then the tags with some sharp fabric scissors so for this pillow i'm just going to go ahead and cut this open have our little pillow insert now let me just measure the finished length of this like 27 and a half it's probably 27 and it stretched a little bit by 14 so this is like 26 it'll be fine if it's a little shorter because we can squish it this way this is like 19 we're gonna have to do some sort of like little detailed seam in the middle or we're gonna be cutting off our little ticking stripe on the sides. So what I'm gonna do is on the front, I'm just folding this directly in half and then kind of making a little crease with my finger. When we open it up, we know that that is the exact middle. This is our center crease right here we just made. So I'm just folding this fabric down and then just manipulating this fold so that my total uh, height is 15 inches All right now you wouldn't have to take out some waste right here if you didn't have details on the edges of your towels but since I want to leave this detailing exposed I have to take out waste in the middle so that is why I'm doing this for the front we took that two inches off in the middle I just pinned it down now for the back I just kind of folded it in half found the exact middle then we're going to sew at two inches right here because we're taking two inches off the back as well but on the back it'll just be a center seam so this is a two inch ruler so this is going to be perfect for giving us our two inch line now i'm just going in with a little pencil and marking where my sew line is going to be this is the backing that we just sewed that center seam right there. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut off this excess and then we're going to press the seam allowance open. Just cut like a good half an inch seam allowance. This is the back one we just sewed and then cut the seam allowance off, press the seam allowance open. This is the front part that we haven't sewed yet, but you can see that the little kind of grain sack stripes will match up once we get this sewn. Now for the top one, what I'm gonna do is stitch actually along the back. So the thread that will be on top is gonna be the bobbin thread. That is gonna be okay. We'll get a straighter stitch instead of trying to see through the top where our edge is. I'm gonna sew from the back. You can see it is sewn down. And we just have like a little, a little flapper doodle that we're going to put some buttons on. I'll sew the buttons through so these kind of stay down. 
it'll be a nice little detail in the front. All right, so this is the front, this is the back. We're gonna match right sides together. And we're gonna make sure that we match up the little stripes on top and bottom. So we're gonna sew all the way around these sides, and then just a little bit right here and right here, just to leave enough space so we can put this pillow fill inside and then we will hand stitch the very bottom opening closed. On the very bottom, I'm gonna start about four or five inches in and then sew at a half an inch seam allowance. And don't ever sew over your pins. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Now when you get to your corner, put your needle down, lift up your foot, and turn it 90 degrees, and then you'll have a nice clean corner. We are sewn all around, and we have an opening here at the bottom to fit our pillow in. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and press my seams open, because that'll give it like a nice finished edge. Now, something I like to do is clip my corners so they sit nicely. Now, this is my sew line right here. Now, I'm just going to cut kind of like a little angle, just like that. Not too close to the corner, but just enough to kind of take out this bulk. Okay, moment of truth. Let's flip her inside out. And then in your corners, just press them up with your finger. Now see how nice that makes your corner look. Now this isn't really necessary when you're working on like a little pillowcase, but if you were working on like a collar or something, you can go in with a pin and kind of pick out that corner just a little bit more so it's even pointier, but we don't really have to worry about that here. There we have it, y'all. This is our opening for the bottom that we will hand sew with a little blind stitch. This is our little flappy flap where I'm going to attach some buttons. Okay, so I don't want to stuff the pillow in here until I get these buttons on. So let's move on to the black one. Now I'm just going to do the same thing for the back piece for the black one. This is the back panel that we already have that seam in the middle. And then for the front one, we still have to take two inches out of the middle here. So we have a couple of different options. We could do the same thing we did with the red one, or we can make like a little pleat like this, and then do some like decorative stitching on top, or we could mimic what we've done here along the back, and just do a little seam there. So we could do like a little strip, like a strip in the middle, and then do like two stitches along the outside to hide that. We could do a contrasting strip. This is, ignore this, this is just a little tester on some um, drop cloth burlap, but this is getting into a little bit more country-ish, not necessarily farmhouse. Two little strips from the side that you could tie a bow in the middle if you want. That's a little cutesy. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut this right in the middle and then do a strip of a contrasting um, drop cloth, but then have the seams hang over just a little bit like this, so you can see a reveal of the contrasting drop cloth. Let me show you a sample. This is a sample of kind of my idea of what I'm talking about. I made this sample before for a dress that I was working on, but basically the same premise as this. This will be this part, and then the reveal strip will be the drop cloth. So, you know, a little fold over with some top stitching. I think that's what I'm gonna do for this. So let's go ahead and fold this in half. So if you are going to be doing this method, what you should probably do is just cut your fabric right in half and then figure out what width of reveal you want and then figure out your seam allowance from there and then cut away the excess. I hope this is not too confusing. I mean, I'm figuring it out with you, so. Let's just keep going. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is press this seam allowance back an inch and a half. This is my little drop cloth reveal strip that we are going to 
pin on top of here at a half an inch seam allowance, but we will be sewing from the top. So I'm going to pin it from the top so I don't have to like pull my pins out from the back. Just a little tiny lip. Then we're gonna attach the other side right to here. So now everything is sewn together. We can just press it down and this should be 15 inches. I hope. <laughs> Perfection. All right, now let's line the back up to it. Now we are going to sew just about four or five inches here and then all the way around the rest. Now when you get to your fold here and all of the excess seam allowance on the back, make sure you flip over your fabric and make sure everything is laying flat because you don't want it to be tucked. A little opening down here. We are sewing around everywhere else. We are just gonna clip our corners, press open our seams. Now that is pretty darn cute. Duff it in there. I'll be. Now for the bottom, we just have to hand sew a little blind stitch and she's good to go. These are the little buttons that I have. If you don't like the color of your buttons, you can always spray paint these up. I was thinking about spray painting these up in that heirloom white, but I kind of like the wood color on these buttons. These are nine hole buttons, and there are quite a few different ways that you can sew these buttons on. But I think what I'm going to do is just do a simple little cross right in the middle. Now here, feel free to be creative. You could use just like regular thread. You could use some contrasting embroidery floss. You could use whatever you want to do. So what we're going to do is measure the full finish width of our pillow so we can get placement for the buttons. So I think I'm just going to do five because I want to have one just like right in the center. All right, so let's take 24 and a half divided by six and that will give us our distance between buttons. I'm just going to use my regular thread, but I'm going to double it up. So I'm going to have two separate strands that are the same length. And then I'm going to have a hand sewing needle that has a pretty big eye. And I will be threading both of these strands through the eye at the same time. And now I have all four ends together. I'm just going to tie in a knot at the end. And then essentially four strands because there are two that are looped in half. And then align our button right on top of that pencil mark and start sewing from the inside up through the top center and then through the middle, the side center, and then through the middle, through the bottom center, through the middle, through the side center, and through the middle again. So our first button is attached, super cute. I like this stitch. The inside to secure the end of your strand, you're just gonna go through, pick up a little bit of fabric that's gonna be sitting right underneath your button Pull it through and before it gets totally tight, you're gonna loop your needle up through that and then pull that tight and that makes a knot on the end. So you can do that a couple times just to make sure everything is secure on the back end and then you can snip your thread. Oh, this is so cute. Let's put our pillow insert in and sew up the bottom. So let me show you guys how to do an invisible stitch on the bottom of your pillow. Pin your seam allowance together. This will help you when you are sewing your seam. Now you're gonna to wanna to thread your needle and make a knot at the bottom. Depending upon the weave of the fabric you are sewing, you might wanna do a double or even a triple knot just to make sure that it doesn't come out. Now you're gonna to wanna to start your first stitch from the inside. So open up your seam allowance, start on the inside. That will make sure that your little knot and your tail is gonna be tucked up underneath there. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is just pick up a little stitch from one side, then you're gonna mirror that on the other side. So you're gonna go right across from where your thread came out and pick up another piece of fabric 
on the opposing side. Now this is called an invisible stitch, a blind stitch, a ladder stitch, you can call it whatever you want, um, but it's eventually the stitches are gonna be making like little ladder rungs. Just make sure you don't pick up too much fabric, but you're gonna do this the whole way down your seam. When you pull it tight, the stitches are hidden. So when you're getting ready to finish, just go ahead and do your last few stitches and then you're gonna make a knot kind of like how we did at the bottom of our button. You're gonna go through just a little bit of fabric, just a few threads. And before you pull that tight, you're gonna loop up through and make a knot. Then you're gonna do that again. You can go through that same knot you just made and go through another little piece of fabric, pull your needle up through that knot and pull it tight. Now to hide the string, just go through your seam, and come out the side, pull the needle all the way through, and then you're gonna pull this taut just a little bit and then snip. So when it comes back to normal, the thread is hidden inside. Super cute pillows. Well, these came out cuter than expected. Um, thank you so much for spending day six of Vlogmas with me and I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna go get cozy in my pillow.